Hey guys, welcome back. Now, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have just completed the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting for 2021. The meeting was over four hours long and it consisted mainly of answering investor questions. And if you want to see the full four hour version, I'll link that below. And in this video, I've pulled out the biggest takeaways and the key insights for all investors in 2021. Buffett and Munger are two of the most successful investors that have ever lived. So even if we don't agree with everything that they have to say, they still do share incredible insights that we can all learn from. So in this video, we will be looking at Warren Buffett's biggest insight. And this is something that he opened the entire show with. Warren Buffett's best advice for investors in 2021, and this was quite surprising. We'll look at Buffett's biggest warning to all investors, and then finish with Warren and Charlie's thoughts on the crypto market. As Bitcoin has passed the $1 trillion mark, maybe Warren has changed his mind. As always, if you do find anything useful in the video, be sure to drop a like and always very much appreciated. Okay, so Warren Buffett opened the meeting with an incredible insight about the world's largest companies. And amazingly, the biggest shift that has happened over the last 30 years. Check it out. I ran off a list of the 20 largest companies in the world by stock market value. And those names, good many of which will be familiar to you, but they were led by Apple but slightly over two trillion, and uh, they went down to the number 20th was worth 330 odd billion. But those are the 20 largest. But what I would like you to do is look at that list um, you know, of the top six companies, five of them are America. So when you hear people say that America hasn't done, you know, it's, got all, it's not working very well or something of the sort, you know, in the whole world uh, of the six top companies in value, five of them are in the United States, thinking of five of the top six companies in the world ending up with a country that started with a half of 1% of the population uh, just a few hundred years ago. But what I would like you to do is look at that list for a minute or two, if you want to, and, and then make an estimate, make your own guess. How many of those companies are going to be on the list 30 years from now? Would you put on five, eight, well, whatever it would be? I would now invite you to look at slide two, or L2, which goes back a little more than 30 years and look at the top 20 from 1989. And if you look at the top 20 from 1989, there's two things that we should grab your interest, at least two. None of the 20 from 30 years ago are on the present list, none, zero. And I would guess that very few of you when I asked you to play the quiz a little, a few minutes ago would have put down zero and I don't think it will be zero, but it is a reminder of what extraordinary things uh, can happen, things that seem obvious to you. One thing it shows, incidentally, is that, that uh, it's a great argument for, for index funds, is that uh, you know, it, the main thing to do is to be aboard the ship, you know, a ship. You know, they were all going to a, a better promised land. You used to know which one was the one they'd necessarily get on, but, but you couldn't help but do well if you just had a diversified group of equities. Uh, U.S. equities would be my preference, but uh, to hold over a... Uh, 30 year period, but if you thought you knew a lot about which ones to pick or the person that you had hiring, you were paying a lot of money to, had all these ideas, and uh, uh, I can tell you their best ideas in 1989 did not necessarily do that well, although overall equities were absolutely uh, the place to be. Um, so interestingly, 30 years ago, the world's largest companies were dominated by the Japanese companies. And then just 30 years later, the entire top 20 had changed. Not one company had stayed in the top 20. And Warren says this was a great argument for index funds, as one of the best things an investor could have done was just get on board the ship. And Warren Buffett always recommends the S&P 500 index fund. But then something very interesting happened. He was directly challenged by a long-term shareholder who stated the fact that Berkshire Hathaway has underperformed the index for over 15 years now. And he asked the question, why should shareholders continue to choose Berkshire Hathaway when they could just use an index fund? And I will also add they'd get a dividend as well because Berkshire Hathaway doesn't pay a dividend. Well, here is what Warren Buffett had to say. 
This question comes from a long-term shareholder who's been here for more than 25 years. And he says, Mr. Munger and Mr. Buffett, after a 15-year period of market underperformance, you're cautious about predicting Berkshire being able to outperform the market in the future. Given this, what do you see as the arguments for long-time shareholders to continue holding their stock versus diversifying their risk across an index? I, I recommend the S&P 500 index fund and that for uh, a long, long time to people. And uh, I've never recommended Berkshire to anybody. Uh, because I, I don't want people to buy it because they think I'm <laughs> tipping them into some time. Never. I mean, no matter what I was selling for. And, uh, uh, and you know, I, I made it public. I, you know, on, on my death, there's a, there's a fund for my uh, then widow. And uh, 90% will go into an S&P 500 index fund and 10% of treasury bills. And, uh, on the other hand, I'm very happy having my future contributions to a group of charities that will be spread over 12 years or so after my death uh, to stay in Berkshire. I think the odds are... Uh, Berkshire, Berkshire, Berkshire is, um, yeah, I, I like it, but I'm not, uh, I, do, I do not think uh, the average person can pick stocks. We happen to have a large group of people that didn't pick stocks, but they picked Charlie and me to manage money for them 50 or 60 years ago. And, and uh, uh, so we have a very unusual group of shareholders, I think, who look at Berkshire as a lifetime savings vehicle and uh, one they don't have to think about. And uh, uh, one that they'll, you know, if they don't look at it again for 10 or 20 years, that that uh, will have taken care of the money reasonably well. But that, I wouldn't argue that the S&P 500 over time. I would, I, I perfect. I, I like Berkshire, but I, uh, uh, I, I think that the a person who doesn't know anything about stocks uh, at all and doesn't have any special feelings about Berkshire, I think they ought to, they ought to buy the S&P 500 index. And for me, this was one of the biggest takeaways from the whole meeting, and I quote, I don't think the average investor can pick stocks. And what I found quite shocking was when directly asked, why should we choose Berkshire Hathaway instead of an index fund? Buffett replied, I have never recommended people to choose Berkshire. I have recommended people to use an S&P 500 index fund. And he goes on to say that when he passes, the estate that he leaves his wife will look like this. So the portion of Warren Buffett's estate that he will be leaving to his wife will look like this. He's instructed that 90% of the money will be in a low cost S&P 500 index fund and 10% will be in short-term government bonds, T-bills. And this is also the portfolio he has recommended for investors. The next big takeaway for me was the discussion about all the small retail investors flooding into the market with this gambling mentality. Remember Jack Bogle's definition of the stock market? The stock market is a casino in the short term and a machine for compounding wealth in the long term. Warren and Charlie voice their concerns about what's happening right now with apps like Robinhood. And here is what they said. We've had a lot of people under the casino in the last year. You have millions and billions of people have set up accounts where they day trade, where, they, where they're selling puts and calls, where they, uh, I would say that you had the greatest increase in the number of gamblers, essentially, that, and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with gambling, and then a, they got better odds than they've got if they played the state lottery, but they've, they've had cash in their pocket, they've had action, and they actually had, you know, have a lot of good results, and, and if they just bought stocks, they do fine and held them, but, but the, the gambling impulse is very strong in people worldwide, and occasionally it gets an enormous shove uh, and, uh, and conditions lead to this place where more people are entering the casino than are leaving every day and it creates its own reality for a while and nobody tells you when the clock's going to strike 12 and it all turns to pumpkins and mice. But uh, I think I read where 12 or 13 percent of their, their casino participants were dealing in puts and calls. I looked up on Apple, you know, the number of seven-day calls and 14-day calls outstanding. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of that is coming through Robin. And that's a bunch of people writing. They're gambling on the price of Apple over the next seven days or 40. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing illegal about it. There's nothing immoral. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't think you'd build a society around people doing it. I mean, if before, this is about as extreme as we've seen it, isn't it, Charlie? That is really re waving the red flag at the bull. I, I think it's just god awful that something like that would draw investment from civilized men and decent citizens. It's it's deeply wrong. We don't want to make our money selling things that are bad for people. 
So this is one of the biggest problems going on right now. And I personally don't see it as a gambling instinct that Warren Buffett referred to. For me, the gambling part is the solution. I see it as the get rich quick instinct. And let's be honest, this is something that we all have to a certain degree. I mean, who wants to get rich slowly? No one, right? We all want to make money as fast as possible. I get that. But the problem is turning to things like gambling as the solution. So one of the biggest problems that we're facing right now is that these new fancy apps and brokers, they're tapping into this human need to get rich quick. Think about a casino. With all the flashing lights and visual stimulus, this is not done by chance. Casinos do this on purpose as it stimulates the brain into risk taking and gambling. And now look at these new fancy broker apps. They are using the same tricks to get you to buy and sell on a regular basis. So remember this, you have the industry and you have investors. The industry wins by getting you to buy and sell stocks because they are the middlemen and they take a small little slice every time something is bought and sold. And yes, that's even the commission-free brokers. And we all know that over time, the casino always wins. So how does the investor win? By buying and holding. When you hold on to your stocks, there are no middlemen taking a slice. So remember, the industry and the brokers are trying to get you to buy and sell on a regular basis. This is how they make money. But we must not fall into that trap. Okay, and to finish up, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have historically not been Bitcoin's biggest fans. But now that Bitcoin has passed the $1 trillion mark, have they changed their mind? Let's find out. I, I knew there'd be a question on Bitcoin or crypto. And, and uh, I thought to myself, well, I've watched these politicians dodge questions all the time, you know, and, and, and uh, I always find it kind of disgusting when they do it. But the truth is, I'm going to dodge that question because the, we probably got hundreds of thousands of people watching this that own Bitcoin, and we've probably got two people that are short. So we got a choice of making 400,000 people mad at us and unhappy, and or making two people happy. And that's just a dumb equation. So I, I thought about it. We had, we had a governor one time in, in uh, Nebraska and uh, a long time ago, but uh, he would get a tough question, you know, what do you think about property taxes or, you know, what should we do about schools? And, and he'd look right at the person, he'd say, I'm all right on that one. <laughs> and he just walk off. Well, I'm all right on that one, and maybe we'll see how Charlie is. <laughs> Those who know me well are just waving the red flag of the bull. <laughs> of course, I hate the Bitcoin success, and I don't welcome a currency that's so useful and to kidnappers and extortionists and so forth. Nor do I like just shuffling out a few extra billions and billions and billions of dollars to somebody who just invented a new financial product out of thin air. So I think I should say modestly that I think the whole damn development is disgusting and contrary to the interests of civilization. And I'll let, leave the criticism to others. <laughs> I'm all right on that one. <laughs> <laughs> So I think we can safely say they won't YOLO on Dogecoin anytime soon. In all seriousness, I don't think technology is Warren Buffett's and Charlie Munger's biggest strong point. They did miss the tech boom over a 10 year, 20 year and 30 year period. They missed Amazon, Tesla, Google, Facebook. They only relatively recently bought into Apple, which turned out to be one of their greatest investments. So the fact that they don't like crypto isn't really a surprise to me. Okay, so the biggest takeaways from the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting for 2021 were, number one, when it comes to the stock market, it strengthens my belief that for 95% of people, index funds are going to be the place to be. Number two is not getting sucked into the casino, and that means buying and selling on a regular basis. And number three, it's amazing to see Warren and Charlie still going strong into their late 90s and doing something that they still clearly love. So there you are guys, hope you found this useful, and just one favor to ask. If you did find anything useful in the video, be sure to drop a like, and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to click below and join us. I do have some great videos coming up that you don't want to miss. Be careful of this guy. Someone is cloning my site, pretending to be me, and trying to get you to call some dodgy WhatsApp number. So be careful in the comments. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.